let's get back to something Shadowlands related. But so people have been asking me uh, this quite a bit. People want to know what who is the next character that is basically going to get denuzered, right? Now, for those of you that don't know what denuzered is, um, who's the who's the next character that's going to get fucked is effectively the question, right? Um, now, the, the problem with that question is I don't know. It could be any character, right? Um, I mean, almost every character in World of Warcraft have been denuzered at this point, you know? Um, even characters that I thought Blizzard would want to have in the foreground for this expansion have been completely shafted, you know, like Talia, Jaina. And it's not that they've been treated badly, it's that they've been treated as if they only exist for brief moments in cinematics, you know? Um, when I learned that we're going to the Shadowlands and there, there might be uh, a, a chance for Arthas, I immediately saw Jaina's storyline picking up, much to my delight. You know, because how can you tell a story about Arthas and not have Jaina be the main fucking plot driver of that of that discussion, right? So I'm going to change my answer to this question and ask a different question instead or really answer a different question instead. But it should explain why so many of these characters are being denuzered uh, the way that they are right so first thing we have to discuss here is the story of world of warcraft the story of the lich king of jaina of anduin um of sylvanas the story of warcraft as it were this story does not belong to steve denuser in fact for most of the story existence steve denuser had nothing to do with this story right this story almost exclusively existed in the mind of chris mason it was his story that he dreamt up it was his story that he developed um in many ways, most likely can be viewed as a, as a as an absolute labor of love from Chris Mason. Um, and considering the fact that Chris Mason loves D and D, loves Warhammer, it sort of makes sense, right? That the story is the way that it is currently, um, and why Mason spent so much time sort of building the world. You know, Chris Mason, as far as I'm concerned, might be the god of world building in video games. The next part here is is a little bit. Uh, controversial, and I will fully admit that this is my opinion. I'm not saying that this is uh, this is true in any way, shape, or form. I have no evidence of this outside of what the story has become. It feels to me as if the newser is that typical. I'm going to use a different industry here as an example, and hopefully that gives you guys some context of what I'm talking about in the movie industry, right? Whenever a new studio head takes over an existing studio, right? So the old studio head gets fired, new studio studio head becomes the studio head. Um, they usually cancel all current projects that isn't near completion. Just cancel. All new products, all new projects, every new series, every new film, whatever it is, if it's not near completion, they just cancel it. Why do they cancel it? Well, because he doesn't want to play with the other guy's toys, you know? not his toys he didn't dream up these ideas so he cancels them and uh, they start something new because they want to play with their own toys now that's the idea that i get from denuser and christy golden in many ways they want to play with their own toys you know th they want to create characters that is their characters storylines that is their storylines how do i reach this conclusion well i look at the sort of last three expansions i don't think this is a controversial opinion but Legion's ending was rushed. The ending of Legion was completely and utterly rushed. Brand new Titan, new big bad, literally the Unmaker, gets introduced and fucked in the same patch, right? With very little known about this Titan, by the way. Sargeras gets pulled back and we, the player, aren't involved in that entire at all. We're not involved in him being dra dragged back to the Pantheon whatsoever. Sargeras, by the way, which is one of the biggest bads in the history of World of Warcraft. He has been the reason for World of Warcraft for a very long time. He's been really Chris Metzen's plaything. Chris Metzen would use Sargeras to push the story forward. They removed Sargeras from the equation. Just, no, no thanks. No interest in playing with these toys anymore. Battle for Azeroth. Is there anyone in this chat that looks at the ending of Battle, Battle for Azeroth and thinks to themselves, that's an example of, a, of someone taking their time to tell a good story? So why? Why did the newser decide he 
has no interest in telling the story of one of the greatest old gods that have ever fucking existed. This is an old god that at first was theorized to exist. There was theories that this old god may exist. Then finally, it was confirmed that this old god exists. This old god had this massive build up around him and it was sort of rushed just to get it done. My read on it, it's not his toys, not his circus, not his monkeys. He doesn't want to play with Nozoth. It's, it's, it's not his story, it's not his toys. He wants new toys for himself. And now Shadowlands is his first IP. Now you could say, but Akalon, Shadowlands feels rushed as well. So doesn't that sort of disprove your theory? Maybe, maybe it does. Or maybe Steve Denuser doesn't know how to write a new story. You see, Steve, Steve Denuser came into World of Warcraft with an IP so fucking strong that it was worth billions. I mean, how do you even kill the story of Warcraft? This is a story with so much history, it would almost be impossible to kill. Even if you fucked up multiple times the story, and we've seen it, right? Redcons have been in our game for a long time and they retcon things and we get angry and then we fall in love with the retcon stuff because we love the story, you know? It was an easy job because all Steve Denuser really had to do was exist, you know? Just breathe, bro, just breathe. You don't have to come up with anything brand new. Just keep telling the story as it is. The IP can exist. I think they took a gamble. You see, I think after BFA, Blizzard needed a win. They needed a, a massive win. And they thought to themselves, what could be a bigger win than the Shadowlands? Arthas, Bolvar, Sylvanas, massive fucking names, big names that's gonna bring the world back into focus, that's gonna bring people back into the game. What's a little exposition amongst friends? Because it's true, it could work, could have been a great expansion, but in order to tell that expansion, you'd have to spend some time actually telling that story, right? You'd need to build up to it, much like Warcraft did and Warcraft 3 did, uh, much like Vanilla and TBC and Wrath did. You need some build up towards it. I think Steve Denuser thought that the IP for Warcraft was stronger than what it was. They thought that they could simply drop into the middle of a story and it would be okay. It would be okay. People would accept it. Because why wouldn't they? The player base is fucking stupid. I mean, we've shoveled BFA down their throats and they came back in their millions for Shadowlands. We shoveled Wall of Draenor down their throats and they came back in, in their millions for Legion. The player base is stupid. They wouldn't even realize. They wouldn't even know. And it could have worked. If Shadowlands was actually a great expansion, it would have worked. We would have forgiven it probably. See, but this was the perfect storm because you had a shit story accompanied with a shit game. <laughs> and suddenly there was nothing to carry it, you know, because the game basically needed the lore to carry it. BFA, by the way, was very much carried by lore, I'll, I'll, I'll admit this. I fucking love the lore in BFA. I didn't like the game, but I still still played it, right? I still followed it because the lore was absolutely insane, absolutely amazing. Shadowlands needed the lore to carry it. The problem is the lore needed fucking Shadowlands to carry it, you know? And since neither could carry it, it's basically limping on, just sort of fucking trying to get to the finish line. You know, remember what we spoke about first topic of tonight? Is Shadowlands the next WOD? Probably has to be, you know? The Denuser tax is probably coming again. And I, I want to be clear. There is a way to fix this, but it's going to be something that pisses people off a lot. Blizzard will have to all aboard the retcon train. And when I say all aboard the retcon, I mean fucking hard. Like I'm I'm talking retcons three times a week, at least. Um, basically come out and say, by the way, Savannah didn't actually burn the tree. She was dominated by Zuval when that burn it, burn it happened. Um, retcon the fuck out of this game. Why? Why? Because retcons isn't bad. Retcons isn't bad. Contrary to popular belief, in an evergreen world, in a world that will always exist, no matter what you do, you will always have retcons. But you have to deal with those retcons the same way Warhammer does. Uh, Alpocalypse actually had this discussion with me last week. Um, do you know how many times Warhammer retcons their own universe? All the fucking time. The difference is they don't give a fuck. They don't apologize. They don't try to hide it. They just retcon it. And then they go, deal. We needed to retcon. Sorry. We couldn't tell the story without a retcon. And so we decided to retcon it. I mean, players just have to accept. This is now the new lore. This is how it's going to work. If Blizzard doesn't retcon and retcon fast, they're in a corner at the moment with Shadowlands that I don't see themselves writing 
I don't see how they can write themselves out of this corner. The other option is death. So you kill Sylvanas, you kill Bolvar, you most likely kill off office finally. You probably kill Jaina as well. So you kill all of the characters that is currently problematic within the game, right? That currently their stories just don't really fit into the game. You kill them all off and you start from scratch. Brand new characters, characters known, and you hope, right? This is this is a massive gamble, just FYI. This is a massive, massive, massive gamble. Because you have to hope that through killing off all of these characters, you can still keep your player base. So there's every chance that your player base turns around and goes, well, that's it then. I was playing this game because I loved Bolvar and I loved Sylvanas and I really cared about Jaina. Since they're gone now, I may as well move the fuck on, right? I might, I may as well go play something else. And the truth is there is finally other games to play, right? It's not as if this is six, seven, eight years ago where if you didn't play WoW, what else would you play? There is other games to play here, you know? Um... I see, a, I see people in chat going reset is the option. Well, you have two kinds of resets, right? You could have the sort of um, standing or hard reset, which would be um, which would be a gameplay reset, or you could do a law reset, right? Which we could also call the soft reset. Uh, soft reset would be what I spoke about earlier. You basically come out and you say that all of the Shadowlands was a dream. As soon as we finish the Shadowlands expansion, the player wakes up from, he, from his dream uh, that Nazoth put him in. And um, we're actually still fighting Nazoth, right? He's still actually alive. And everything we just saw was, was we don't know if it's true or if it's a lie. Because Nazoth knows some of it, but he doesn't know all of it. As for people asking for both kinds of resets, so a hard and soft reset, um, I don't see Blizzard ever doing that. I don't think it will ever happen. And I, I, I get, I want it too. I'll be honest with you, I, I want it too, but I don't see Blizzard going for it. 